Good day, mate. My name's Tom. <laughs> I'm with Home and uh, RVs, and we're gonna be shipping your uh, outback down to the down under. So I'm gonna explain some things to you uh, around the outside of the unit and then the inside, and uh, so we'll start out here. Uh, these are your LP tanks. There is no LP in them because we can't ship them with LP in them. Uh, but if both tanks are turned on, there would be a green light in here instead of the red one. And it would show you there was gas in the tanks. Then, if both tanks are on, when this tank, which just indicates it's drawing from this tank, is empty, it would, the regulator would automatically switch to this tank. You have to come out and manually switch it to that tank. Now you know you're drawing off of this one. You can take this one and get it filled and bring it back. We're going to close the valve since there's no gas in them anyway. Back here is your wet cell battery. Uh, it's a brand new battery. Uh, there's uh, water over the plates. And uh, you want to check about every three uh, to four months to make sure that the water is uh, over the plates so that you can keep a charge on the battery. Uh, if not, then add some distilled water until there is. There's a uh, die core seal across your roof, and there's one in the front all the way across. It's a solid rubber roof all the way to the back, and then there's another die core seal across the back. There's also a die core around anything coming through the roof, like your antennas and your vents. You want to check those twice a year. Usually, we say the beginning of camping season, the end of camping season, uh, to make sure that the die core is not cracked. Uh, if, there, if you do find a crack, then only use die core seal on it. Uh, this, uh, if you use a, a uh, silicone, it's going to eat right through the uh, rubber roof and void your warranty. So uh, you want to make sure you only use the die core seal. Up here is a storage area that runs all the way through to the other side. Here's your fresh water fill. Fill this with a, a hose. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're starting you out with a uh, start out kit. Uh, it's uh, free of charge from Holman's that will have a hose in it that you can make this fill. You can also uh, use the same hose for your city water connection, which is right beside it. If you're uh, hooked up to city water, we suggest that you uh, have a regulator that keeps the uh, poundage to 55 pounds from blowing any lines inside and uh, also if you uh, have, would put a 90 degree bend on that then your hose will not kink and uh, give you less pressure than you need. Up here is your tire pressure 65 psi. We've already done that for you but by the time it gets to you you may have to check the tires again but uh, you want to keep it at 65 psi and just to uh, keep the tire tread uh, constant, just like you would on your car. Located up here are your stabilizers. There's a uh, speed jack or a speed crank inside one of the compartments that you can lower these down just to stabilize the unit. They're not to level the unit. If you try to level with them, you'll bend the integrity of the framing. Over here, we have a rubber seal that is very pliable and you want to keep it that way by uh, spraying it with a U, U, UV protection uh, silicone spray. Uh, you might want to do that a couple times a week if you leave it out in the sun uh, just to make sure it doesn't get brittle. Your sewer connection is here. Uh, it's just a bayonet connection. You turn, screw it off. There's a hose in your uh, bumper that you can screw on, and this is where your dump is. The uh, pull for they'll find them. We'll figure it out. Don't worry. We'll find them later. All right. Your uh, water heater is here. It's a gas or electric. In order to use it as gas, first you want to make sure that it's full of water. 
uh, by pulling the safety valve. Uh, to use it as gas, you just go inside, push the button, and it will light off automatically. To use it as electric, you want to pull this pin, turn the electric switch on here. There could also be an electric switch inside. If there is, then you have to push that switch as well. You hear your black and gray poles that are up on the uh, beam. Here's your black pole. You want to pull that one first after you've hooked your sewer pipe in and your gray here. Pull it second and that'll wash out your sewer line. You have aluminum wheels. We've already torqued those down, the nuts down, to uh, 110 pounds. You want to check them out before you go out on a long trip. Uh, you want to stop here at 10, 25, or 50 miles. Uh, check and make sure they're still tight. If you have a torque wrench, you could also torque them down to 110 pounds. This is a very nice feature. This will flush out your black tank by hooking a water hose to it. The pressure from the hose will then flush out your black tank and keep it clean and working properly. Some storage area in the back. And another storage area all the way through. And here's your speed wrench for your stabilizers which are on all four corners. This is your 30 amp service cable. It's approximately 25, 30 feet long. It stores inside. Part of your uh, startup kit today, we're going to give you uh, a uh, connector that will go from the 30 amp to a 15 amp at your home. Uh, and that way you can get it st stocked up, the refrigerator on. You cannot run the air conditioner but you'll be able to run your lights in the refrigerator. Here we have satellite prep and cable prep uh, if you're in a park that has those. Your sewer hose is stored back here. And it comes with the unit. Your spare tire is here uh, with a nice cover on it from Peach Lunch. The other side of the storage bin, rear entrance, this is the back of your refrigerator, it's not a lot to see, it's for technicians to get in and repair the uh, refrigerator. There's uh, a cap that goes on the end of this hose which uh, we'll be installing before it leaves here. Uh, this is to let condensation out, it does not allow hot air come in. So you want to make sure that that cap is on at all times. This is the exhaust for your furnace. And it, we suggest that you get a uh, wire uh, or a screen cover for this to keep uh, insects and uh, other critters. varmints out, critters out. This is your outside grill. It has a hookup for a sink here, it's a quick connection. Also, you could use this as a hose, as a quick connection. Your sink is just a dump sink. And your grill hooks in to this quick connect here and there's also a uh, valve on it. It's in the off position right now. You have an outside receptacle. It's hooked to your uh, GFI receptacle in the bathroom, and I'll show you that when we go inside. You also have an outside TV connection, as well as some plate, a bracket to hang your TV. You're listening to your outside speakers right now. You're going to run your awning out. There's a switch inside. It'll be in there. It should be on that wall. 
It'll be over. Oh, it's back here. Yeah. It's back here. That's all I was going to say. You can extend your awning with this switch. While we have the awning out, I'd like to demonstrate this. These shocks, as long as uh, they're not locked down, will allow water that is uh, collected on top to drain off and then the shock will push the awning back up. You never want to leave this awning out in any windy conditions. Uh, you're not able to tie these down, so if you leave it out, it's going to blow right up over the unit and uh, it's going to cost you some money. It's too easy to put in. So at night, put it in. In a storm, put it in. Just push the button. Alright, that concludes the outside. Now we'll go inside.